Grades were invented around 1820 by uh, some folks at Harvard as a way of telling the parents who were paying a fair amount of money for their uh, offspring to attend this fancy school that they were actually attending class and doing the work. So that was the initial need. It was a proxy for somebody who was not in the classroom, a shorthand way of telling them that something good happened in the classroom. And then very quickly they became a way of comparing students. So what, it wasn't just that the students showed up and did the work, uh, it was that they were better than other students or worse than other students. And so it became a relative measure of the quality of the work. And for 200 years, that shorthand proxy has been the dominant method for people who were not in the classroom to have some sense of what happened in the classroom. When you look at it that way, you realize that grades actually aren't for students and teachers. They don't help them in the classroom in the actual act of learning. They're kind of a post-mortem shorthand proxy for people who were not there to have a sense of what happened there. But we, they were the best we could do. Now, we have these amazing tools that in our pockets and in our hands, these smartphones, where we can capture the actual work that's happening in real time and share that. And so I can see what's behind that seat. Now, does that mean the need for the, for the grading goes away? We don't think so. We think there's always gonna be a need for that shorthand proxy. Is it gonna be the dominant way that people get information about what happened in the classroom? Well, for some of them, yeah, it will remain so. But for others, for parents, for example, who now have the ability on a daily basis to see what's happening in the classroom. What did, what did my student do today? What can I talk to them about tonight over the dinner table? The performance assessment components in the portfolio become far more important. And the ability, more importantly, the ability for the student themselves to see their own progress over time. The struggling reader still makes progress between October and May. They may be a C the entire time, but their ability to look at their reading and see how they've changed and how they've improved is really the most important thing for them as the learner. Again, they're inside the classroom, that's what they need, but people outside the classroom still need the proxy, that shorthand proxy for what happened. So do grades go away? No. Do they evolve? Absolutely. The balance between grades and, and performance assessment is really going to shift as these tools become richer and richer over the next several years. And it's going to be really interesting to watch where different schools end up on that spectrum. Some will do completely away with grades, some will still rely very heavily on them, some will be mandated to report them still. But the learners in the classroom and the teachers in the classroom will now have a much richer way of having a conversation about what's happening in the classroom while still providing that shorthand proxy to people who weren't there. So that's our view of how this is going to unfold over the next several years and we're really excited to be part of it.